Hello and welcome to part two of B Money's Horror 101. Uh, we're going to be picking up where we left off last time with uh, the 60s and segregation and how that affected George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. But first, I'd kind of like to say something. Um, I was looking over the last video and I don't, I don't know what was up. It just didn't seem very interesting. I mean, I was interested in the topic, of course. I picked it, but my performance was just lackluster and for that I apologize like I couldn't imagine anyone else watching it and, you know having it hold their interest for the entire nine minutes so I mean also I was trying to put a lot of content in a short amount of time uh, I'll try not to do that this time I'll take it slow but not too slow anyway uh, where were we uh, segregation night in the living dead um, Okay, that brings us to the uh, late 60s, early 70s, and uh, possibly the golden age of horror, in many critics' views, the 70s, is when we really start to see the birth of the slasher, and clearly, I mean, what was going on in the 60s and 70s? No. Vietnam. And I think that heavily influenced a lot of directors at that time. I mean, I know for a fact Martin Scorsese was a Vietnam veteran, and uh, it was just a very dark time in United States history, and it's kind of funny I'm talking about it right now, because I don't know if I'm uploading this later today or not, but today's Veterans Day, November the 11th, and I certainly hope I don't say anything that's offensive to anyone. Uh, I don't think I plan on saying anything negative about... I'll just start by saying Vietnam was a very brutal and ugly mark in American and not just American world history period. It was a time of just unrelenting brutality on you know, depending of wherever you are in the world. It was just very harsh and I think that really affected the horror movie directors of that period. And I'll start off with uh Tobe Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Clearly. Alright, now what do you have the antagonist doing in that film? Removing faces. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of torture and stuff that people would see on the news constantly during the Vietnam War coverage. And also in uh, Wes Craven's Last House on the Left, uh, I actually watched a documentary where Wes said the, the shot where uh, the girl is walking towards the lake and she gets shot in the back of the head. He meant for that shot to mimic the Saigon execution photo, and it's just really fucking dark, and that's why a lot of great horror has come from that period, just, just the darkness, man, the fucking darkness, uh, uh I believe in a thing called love. Alright, I'm starting to ramble again. I'm sorry folks. Let's pick it up and move on. Alright, we have Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it doesn't say it in the original, but I remember distinctly in uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which didn't come out until the 80s, uh, they say that uh, Leatherface's brother Chop Top wasn't uh, there because he was in the big one. He was in Vietnam while this was going on. And I don't know if they meant to make any kind of remark by that. Maybe it's just a little character depth. He came back with a metal plate in his head. Nah. Alright, let's move on to Carpenter's Halloween. John fucking Carpenter. Yeah. Alright. Uh, Carpenter was the late 70s, though. or Well, Halloween was. You know, he had the earlier hit, uh, Assault on Precinct 13, which wasn't really a horror movie, but it was a damn good movie. Also was remade. Um, with, uh, Halloween, we really see the birth of the slasher icon. Leatherface, kinda, but, uh, I think no one embodies that slasher attitude more than Michael Myers himself. But, to relate with the video, what does it all mean? Well, when we see this movie being made, it brings us the concept of slasher survivor morality. You know, the basic rules, if you drink, you're going to get killed. 
If you fuck, you're gonna get killed. If you do drugs, you're gonna get killed. And if you're athletic, you're gonna get killed, huh? They always kill the strong guy just to show how strong the killer is, I mean... But I guess they just go on the assumption that if you're well built, you're probably a jerk. But survival through morality, and this is in the late 70s, so... Does anything really need to be said anymore about that? Um, the safety of the suburbs. We see that these uh, white picket fence paint America from the 50s isn't that safe anymore because we see, you know, Michael Myers just strolling around, breaking into people's homes and killing them in the suburbs, which in the pretty much after the 50s up until I'm guessing 78, I'm sure this made a big point that the suburbs were like seen as the ultimate, you know, white American fortress of solitude. Like, it was impenetrable, and to have someone, you know, pervert that was just terrifying. And of course, you know, the American babysitter, you know, when you mess with that, you know, you're messing with Mommy Part 2. That's just, I'm sure it was very unsettling at the time, and that's why that movie is so iconic, in my opinion. Uh, moving on. Okay, late 70s, early 80s, we have, a uh, Cronenberg's, uh, fucking... He mostly dealt with, uh, like, body humor, or, ho that's a humor, body horror, with, like, movies about viruses and stuff, usually some kind of virus that makes you go insane and kill people, or a virus that pretty much turns you into a zombie, and this was in the late 70s and early 80s, the 80s. and so, I mean, with these movies... The virus was, well, let's be blunt here, it was supposed to be a commentary on AIDS, the discovery of AIDS, and I don't really know, I mean, was he just trying to do it as a horror thing, or was he, ah, let's, let's not go too far into that, he's not even that famous of a director. Alright, next we, uh, oh, we gotta, we gotta take a step back. Well, no, we already went over the last house on the left. I messed up my little fucking timeline here. Sorry. Oh, we're at about 7.30. Alright, I'll wrap it up. Uh, with the next video, we should be able to finish up until modern film. Um, I hope this one's been much more entertaining than the last. This has been B-Money's 4101. Good night.